Welcome back everybody, this is Joe Astorino, CCIE number 24347, and in tonight's video we're going to be taking a look at the port priority characteristic of the spanning tree protocol. We're going to take a look at exactly uh, what the port priority feature does, and I'm going to show you guys how to manipulate it to go ahead and change the way that your spanning tree is going to converge in a looped layer 2 network. So this is really applicable anywhere from CCNA all the way up to the CCIE. We're going to get in depth here with the port priority uh, characteristic of spanning tree. So before we get into that, let's just do a quick review. Um, look at our example network diagram here today, and let's just review the spanning tree protocol process. Here we've got two switches, cat1 and cat2. We're going to want catalyst1 to be the root bridge here in our spanning tree topology. We've got redundant links between them on port 23 and 24. So obviously we have a loop, and what's going to happen is one of these interfaces is going to have to go into the blocking state to stop the loop. The question is going to be which one goes into blocking. So the spanning tree algorithm, the way it works, the first thing we do is we're going to elect a root bridge. The root bridge is selected by the lowest bridge ID, and the bridge ID is made up of a switch priority and then a MAC address. Now the default switch priority is 32,768. If you don't change it at all, that's what you're going to get. And it's really going to come back down to lowest MAC address. So in our diagram, we want catalyst number one to be the root bridge. So let's jump on to our equipment and kind of see what's going on. We're going to be running per VLAN spanning tree here, but we're only going to be dealing with VLAN one here to keep it simple. So let's jump over on cat one. And I'm going to say show spanning tree VLAN 1. And we can see that at the moment, our bridge ID or our, our priority is 32769. It's actually the default plus the VLAN number. And we can see here's our MAC address. Now, cat 1 is not the root bridge because notice it says that the root MAC address is this number here which is completely different. Jump over onto cat2. We're going to see that cat2 is actually the root bridge. And even says this bridge is the root. So before we get too far into this, let's just make cat1 the root bridge. So I'm going to say spanning tree VLAN1 root primary. And what that's going to do for me is it's going to dynamically lower cat one's um, priority here. So there it will have a lower priority and thus a lower bridge ID and become the root bridge. We can see now catalyst one has that lower priority and we are the root bridge. So now that we got that out of the way, that's step one of the spanning tree algorithm. Step two, what's going to happen is any switch that's not the root switch in this case, uh, Catalyst 2, is going to have to pick a root port. Now, the root port is the port on that switch that's closest to the root bridge. And the way it decides that, first it looks at the spanning tree cost to get to the root bridge. In this case, we've got two interfaces, both fast Ethernet, both directly connected, and they both have a spanning tree cost of 19. So the cost is going to be the same for Cat2 to get to the root bridge, through either one of those ports. The second thing it's going to look at, if those are tied, is the lowest sending bridge ID. So it's going to look at port 23, it's going to look at port 24, and it's going to look at the BPDUs coming into that link, and it's going to pick the one coming from the switch with the lowest bridge ID. Now since both of these links are connected back to the same physical switch, the bridge ID is going to be the same as well. And that's where we get into port priority as a tiebreaker. Third thing that's going to happen is Cat2 is going to look at those BPDUs coming from Cat1, and he's going to look at the port priority that's being sent to it, or the received port priority coming from Cat1, and it will go ahead and pick the lowest one. Now that's where it gets a little bit confusing for some people, Remember that we're looking at the received port priority, not the port priority configured on our local switch. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Let's just see where we are. Jump over to Cat2. And we can see from the show spanning tree command output here. Here's our ports. Oh, you know what? This is before it converged, before we flipped the root bridge over to Cat1. So let's run that command again. There we go. So what we have here is port 23 has been elected the root port. And port 24, because it's not the root port and it's not a designated port, it went into the blocking state. Now the reason that happened again, the first thing it looked at was the cost, and the cost was the same on both links. Next we looked at the received bridge ID, and that was the same since we're going back to cat1 on both links. So what we look at next is the received port priority. Now that can be a little bit confusing here, because you see in the output, over here on the right, uh, priority.number we see 128.23, 128.24. That's not actually the received port priority, okay? That's the port priority configured on this local switch. So if we want to see what the actual received port priority is, we need to go ahead and do a show spanning tree, VLAN 1, interface, fast 0, 23, detail. So if we look at that, we'll see a few different things here. We're going to see again the cost on the interface, the port priority, and the port identifier. So our priority that's actually configured on port 23 of CAT2 is 128. Then it takes the port priority and the interface number to get an overall port identifier. That's what's local to the switch. What we're actually receiving, which is what matters, from the other side here, you're going to see here. That's the designated port ID. So the designated port, which is FAST023 on CAT1, is sending out BPDUs. And in those BPDUs, it's telling us a port priority. And that port priority here is 128.25. And we can see the same thing here on port 24. So really what's happening here is CAT2 looks at this port priority that it's receiving and it looks at this port priority that it's receiving and it's going to go ahead and pick the lowest one and that is why when we look at this port 23 won the root port election because it had the lowest received port priority now notice when we jump back to this command the received port priority was 128.25 Let's jump over on cat1 and verify that, because really, this here, if that's what we're receiving, that should be the local port priority that's set over on the other switch. So let's do a show spanning tree VLAN 1 interface fast 0, 23 detail. And we can see here that our local port priority is 128.25 and should be 128.26 right there. So that brings up the question, well, if what if we want to change things here? What if we want on CAT2, what if we want port 23 to be blocking and port 24 to be forwarding instead? Well, the easiest thing to do, one thing we could do, is we could change the spanning tree cost over on Catalyst 2. So we could make the port cost of, say, port 24 lower than it is on port 23. That would take care of it. But this video is about port priority. So because it's based on the received port priority, we can change the port priority all we want on CAT2, and it's not going to make a bit of difference because we're not looking at what we locally configure. We're looking at the received port priority. So if we want to use port priority to manipulate things, we actually need to do it over here on cat1. So right now, we've got 23 forwarding, 24 blocking. Let's manipulate port priority on cat1, port 24, and uh, switch things around here. So what we do, let's go into global config mode, fast 024, 
and I'm going to say spanning tree VLAN 1 port priority and now I've got my option I'm going to go ahead and say 64 because the defaults 128 and the lowest one wins let's go ahead and do that now it might take a bit for spanning tree to converge let's jump out over onto cat 2 show span VLAN 1 and right now you can see that it is going through the convergent state 23 went directly into blocking 24 is now going to win the root bridge or the root port election and it's going through the spanning tree listening state so remember we spend 15 seconds in listening 15 seconds in learning by default before we transition the port to the forwarding state so there we go our 30 seconds have passed and we are in the forwarding state and you can see here that things are flipped now 23 is blocking, 24 is forwarding. We didn't touch a single thing on CAT2. Also notice here that in the command output, this hasn't changed. So we still see a port priority of 128 because this is indicating to us what the port priority is on the local switch, not the port priority that we're receiving. So if we jump back to our other command, show spanning tree VLAN 1, interface fast 024 detail we'll see this is our locally configured port priority which makes no difference here this is the port priority that we're receiving from cat1 which is a port priority of 64 and an interface ID of 26 and that is why when we look at this again it's flipped over now and fast 024 is forwarding so that's a bit about port priority and spanning tree and how you can manipulate it to change which ports are forwarding and which ones aren't. So until next time, guys, keep studying hard. You can follow me uh, on Twitter at jasterino and check out my blog at astorinonetworks.com. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you later.